All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call this meeting to order. I would ask that everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would ask that we'd all please remain standing for a moment of silent observation, thought of the troops defending this country all over the world. Thank you. Before we do the opening statement and roll call, just a general announcement is that Councilman uh, Malave will not be here this evening. Uh, Councilman Malave's father has taken seriously ill and he had to fly out to Puerto Rico on an emergency basis. So Councilman Malave uh, will not be with us. I would ask that everyone please keep uh, Mr. Malave and his family and in particular his father uh, in their thoughts and prayers. Could we please have the opening statement and roll call? The minutes reflect that adequate notice of the holding of this public participation meeting of the Howell Township Council was provided for in the following manner. By the posting of a copy of said notice upon the bulletin board in the Township Municipal Building on December 21, 2005. By the faxing of a copy of said notice to the Asbury Park Press, Tritown News, and Star Ledger for publication on December 21, 2005. By the filing of a copy of said form of notice in the Township Clerk's Office on December 21, 2005. The public will be allowed to attend and will be allowed to participate pursuant to the open public meetings law. The public is reminded that civility and decorum will be maintained during the meeting. Any contracts awarded at this meeting or between now and the next meeting will be required to comply with the requirements of Public Law 1975, Chapter 127, and JAC 1727. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code, be advised that this facility is designed with three emergency exits for your safety. The locations are as follows. Upon exiting the meeting room to the rear, they are to your immediate left and immediate right and at the front of the meeting room at the left of the dais. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcasts on Howell Township TV 77. Roll call, please. Mr. Malave. He's excused. Mrs. Showmaker? Present. Mr. Tabasco? Present. Mr. Walsh? Present. Mayor DeBella? Present. Okay, we have a um, presentation that we're going to make right now. I'd ask that members of the council please join me in the front of the meeting room. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we use this meeting as an opportunity to talk about terrific things that have happened in the township. And we've had a very unique situation happen in the township that requires us to really take a moment and set aside some time to celebrate how fortunate we are as a community to have a group of very special people that are at our service and that are on call 24-7 protecting the people of Howell Township. Every time one of us hears a siren, we may begin to take it for granted, but it's often some young man or some young lady, our parents, our brothers or sisters, our neighbors, rushing to try and save someone's life. And for some of these people, it means charging into a building that's on fire, and it means trying to rescue someone that might be trapped inside. And there is no word that could describe the bravery and the courage that it must take to absolutely be able to, to go through with that. And every time that they get called to that action, they do it flawlessly, and in many cases, they're saving people's lives. And so it is absolutely appropriate that we take a moment to recognize these people who are the true heroes of our community. And we did have a very tragic, almost tragic situation take place in our community, and, and once again, uh, the, the bravest men and ladies in our community uh, took, uh, took the challenge and, and and did an outstanding job. And I'd like to ask the chief of the Southern Fire Company to come on up and to share with us specifically what, um, what took place. And then we've got some, some awards we'd like to give out in recognition and thanks to that. Chief, if you would uh, introduce yourself to everybody and tell us everything that took place. I'm Chief Menelo from Southern Fire Department, District 3, Howe Township. On the evening of July 21st, we had a uh, very heavy thunderstorm that came through our area. Um, we were, station 19-3 was dispatched for wires down. 
on, on uh, Friendship Road in Route 9. Um, Second Assistant Chief Stephen Hatchkiss was first on scene, advising him, PD that the wires were not on uh, Pep Boys, they were down on uh, Friendship Road and Route 9. I pulled up momentarily behind him, uh, acknowledged that I was on scene, taking command, and at this time, there are, not sure if everybody's aware of it, but there are some heavy primary um, voltage lines that come down Friendship Road. So one of those power lines came down, it has about 26,000 volts, is what I'm told, on one line that's dropped. So Stephen and I, Stephen blocked off uh, New Friendship Road down by the Candlewood uh, Shopping Center there. I went further up past uh, 22 uh, Friendship Road. I was right across the street. There was a heavy power line that was dropped across the property line of 22 Friendship Road, and it was arcing, it was still energized, and at this time, we were advising Hal PD that we needed to have um, GPU to respond immediately. At this point, there was more explosions that were coming up, the lines were energized, and the line dropped further down um, near the closest pole, and there's a service line that runs to 22 Friendship Road. The wire, the one power primary line dropped down even closer to the uh, service line to the house of 22 Friendship Road, started energizing, arcing, uh, there were some loud um, explosions that were coming out of it. Uh, I advised the, the police department that we had to shut the roads down. And at that time, uh, we had to move out the spectators back. Um, and we, then we received a uh, tra radio transmission that there could possibly could be two people inside the, of this house. Upon receiving that information, Engine 375 uh, arrived on scene by, with Lieutenant Latchney. He pulled his crew out of there. They came up to where we were starting to establish a command center. I advised HAL PD that we need a GPU here immediately. Have them respond. It's very important. 22 Friendship Road was starting to ignite on fire. At this point, with the, pri uh, the primary line still energized across the front of the property, Second Assistant uh, Chief Stephen Hatchkiss and Lieutenant Latchney took their crews. It was two three-man rescue teams down to the Candlewood Shopping Center, made their way through the back of the woods and into the back of the property of 22 Friendship Road. At that time, the rescue teams had removed uh, what seemed to be the resident's dog that was sitting on a porch. They moved the dog out of the way, put him, in, put him in a safe location. They broke the door open. The first team worked its way inside, located the woman that was inside, brought her back out, Second, then the first team made their advanced their way further into the building. All at this time, the building was on fire, and we still could not go into the property, across the property line, because of this power line that was energized. These gentlemen made their way inside. They found a, a locked door, bedroom door. They found an elderly gentleman sitting on his bed. Uh, I believe he was supposed to be like 71 or 78 years old. He had Alzheimer's. He was just sitting on the bed. By the time they got him out of there, they rescued these people. Stephen Hatchkiss um, advised command that we had rescued both these people, advising to have the EMS people, uh, led by Captain Jeff DiMatteo, to respond to the same route that they made in to the back of the house to report there with their people so they could um, provide EMS service to these individuals. The elderly gentleman went to the hospital. He is safe today. The uh, young lady that was with them uh, refused. She was checked out and refused um, treatment. So at that point, the house was fully involved at the top. We called for mutual aid from Station 19-4, mutual aid out of from um, one man, one truck with uh, manpower from 19-4, one truck with manpower from Station 19-5. We called for a RIT team from Station 19-2, and we called for Station 19-1 also to appear and cover assignment. The RIT team was called because the six firefighters went inside the building to risk their life while this, fire, this house was starting to ignite into a, a golf of flames. So if something, God forbid, if something happened to them when they were in there, the RIT team from Adelphia was online. Uh, that brought in Station 19-4 19-5 to assist. Now the day of this, of this all going down, while these gentlemen are all inside, these firefighters are in there looking around, there happened to be a hydrant parked right across the street. So we had one, put our truck right there on the hydrant, waited for the GPU to, to shut down the power lines. We brought in the aerial. They acknowledged that PD called us back, told them that the, the line is dead. You can, you know, come in. We can just start to put the fire out. We brought in our aerial, put it in. We stretched two lines. The teams from uh, Delphia, 
and uh, Freewood Acres and Ramtown, and the guys from Squ uh, Southern pushed their way through the door, checked to make sure there was no more visible fire. Um, fire started to come down once they started poking for around, looking for where the fire was in the back part of the building. The fire came out of the bedroom closet, and we had to evacuate the building. Chief William Goddard from 1904 was on was at the front door, saw that the building was starting to collapse from the roof. We evacuated the building, and at that point, we did a exterior uh, fire extinguisher. And basically, we're here today to be with these, all these individuals who did a great job, and I'm very proud that I was able to lead them. And the training we receive from all the fire companies, we all work together. This is something that we've worked hard for, that we all we get all the same training uh, from our commissioners, they allow us. And through the commissioners, through the taxpayers, they provide us with the opportunity to perform like this. Um, it's unusual where you, some individuals go through their career and they never have the opportunity to get in and see what a rescue is like on their, on their terrible conditions. Some of us make it out. This time, it's a good, happy ending. Thank you. Chief, on behalf of all of the people of Howell Township, we are grateful to you and all of the people that were involved in this rescue situation. The, the community is truly indebted to your service. And as a small token of our appreciation, we've got some certificates that we'd like to present, and I think most of the people are here, and we'd like you to come up. The certificate reads, Howell's Hero Award, and it's presented to each of these individuals, and it says, in recognition of your heroic and life-saving efforts, the Township of Howell is proud to award you with this Howell's Hero Award. Your bravery, courage, and heroism in the face of great danger is greatly appreciated. And it's presented on this eighth day of August 2006 by myself, the seal of Howell Township, and certainly on behalf of all my colleagues on the council. I'd like to call up the first person, firefighter Kyle Johnson. The next is firefighter Danny Ryan. <laughs> firefighter Adam Motto. Firefighter Chris Puccio. <laughs> Lieutenant Ken Lachney. <laughs> Second Assistant Chief Stephen Hatchkiss. Chief, Louis Memlo. We also had, as Chief described, a whole group of people who participated in this. In addition, obviously, to the, to the firefighters, we had members, obviously, of our police department, and we also had individuals from our first aid squad uh, from the police department, Patrolman Jesse Moore. I don't believe that uh, those officers are here, but... We'll read all of their names. Patrolman Nicholas Bondaroo. And Patrolman Guy Arancio. Truly Howell's finest. We also had the chief of our fire bureau, Chief Robert Hotmar. Is the chief here? Okay. Chief Bernard Barnes. Chief Tom Hubert. Chief William Gatto from Ramtown, terrific company. First Assistant Chief Robert Donahue. And also from Howell's First Aid Squad, Captain Jeff DiMatteo.
we'll see to it that we get these other awards to these other individuals that participated again. To all of you, we are greatly indebted for your bravery and your service to our community. You are the true heroes of Howell Township. Thank you all very much. Okay, we are going to get right into hearing of citizens. And I would ask uh, folks as they come up, first of all, welcome everyone. It's our public participation meeting, so this meeting obviously is for public comment and input. Uh, the first person is Mr. William Ball, Sr. Mr. Ball, welcome. If you just kindly give us your full name and address for the record, and hopefully those mics are on. Good evening. Uh, I'm just a little bit overwhelmed by what I just heard from all the people. And I used to complain when I saw them out on the streets collecting money, holding up traffic. I said, I will never complain again, especially that they are volunteers for everything that they did. Absolutely. You can uh, have a seat if you like and okay, bring the mic right to your uh, face. Thanks, Tom. I started about a year. I'm, my name is William Ball. I live on Friendship Road in Howe. And I started sometime last year with Mr. Lucy. Um, it was discontinued after Mr. Lucy was um, not reelected. But uh, my, my concern in the township is parking in the parking lots. On any given day, you can start at the Aldridge parking lot, starting maybe at 5 o'clock, and you can start at Retro Fitness, head out towards Aldridge Road, and in front of the liquor store, in front of the, the karate shop, in front of the pizza place, and then in front of the dancing school, nothing but cars parked and their blinkers all on. You can head across the street and over to the Byright Shopping Center where the post office is, and once again, you've got cars parked in every parking, out in the fire zones, in the front of the parking lots, in front of the dance studios, in front of the post office. Head down to the Kmart Shopping Center in front of the dry cleaners and Pathmark and Kmart. Then go to Walmart and you've got the same thing. Go to the new shopping centers where you people have your planning and zoning have approved in the last three or four years. You don't seem to have those problems. I started a year ago, like I stated, but last Friday night I was coming out of Retro Fitness and I watched a little girl almost get hit running out of the karate school in between two parked cars with their flashers on. And I really complained about it. My wife said to me, stop complaining and go do something. I'm hoping that I can do something. It's, it's, we need, personally, a no tolerance, no parking zone in front of everything. It's us, the residents, who are, are parking there. It's, the people aren't coming from Freehold. They're not coming from Tom's River. It's, it's us. And I don't know whether you're aware of, of it or not. And if you aren't, start paying attention to it in the shopping center. Someone's going to get hurt someday, but our people are just parking wherever they want. You put a lot of planning into your planning board and your zoning and your engineering to create these fire zones and the parking on the other side of the parking lots, making people walk to the stores. They're not doing it. They're just parking and putting their flashers on and parking wherever they please. And, and my, st my, my concern is that someone's going to get hurt someday. But also, if you have a no parking, no tolerance zone, find the people $35. It can also be a profitable situation mm -hmm. to help pay for some of the police force that we have. But I don't know that if you're aware of it or not or if you see it when you're out, but it's everywhere now. Every dance studio, every pizza shop, every cleaners, every supermarket, people just put their flashers on and makes it okay. And in some instances, they just leave their car there. And we have... In most of the stores now, you have that new no idling uh, signs are up and everywhere. And it does, nobody's paying attention to anything. And, and it was just a month ago that I saw a police car in front of a cleaners. And I figured, well, he's on duty doing something or something wrong. He comes out of his uniform. 
And so, I mean, so it's not just, it's everybody's doing it. And to me, it's a real pet peeve with me more than anything. It drives me nuts when I pull up to a shopping center and I've walked all the way the distance and parked out because I had to, and I see people who just pull up and park and get out of their car and go in and leave their cars there or drop someone off and sit out there and wait for them to come out. So I'm really just complaining and beefing my, my pet peeve right now. Well, well, more than anything, Mr. Ball, what, what is the hazard is when those cars are like that, if a child or even an adult steps off of the sidewalk in between a car like that and somebody else doesn't see them. I saw it last Friday night. That's, someone really, will have that's a why I came tonight. Yes. And, was, and that happened at the dance studio over by the karate on the Aldridge Shopping Center as I was coming out of Retro Fitness. And the child was innocent, knew nothing, was running across to his parent and, who was parked where they should be mm. and ran between two cars who were parked where they shouldn't be. We need to, Mr. Shinicki, we need to get a, a, a note out to the police department to, <coughs> we should not be giving maybe warnings, we should... Um, but if you put signs up that say no tolerance, no parking zones, there's no excuse. You know, right. it's like going through Manchester Township. Mm. You you can't talk your way out of a ticket. Mm -hmm. You get pulled over, you get a ticket. So they're not actually parking; they're standing. Parking they use a technical term. Yeah, so they shouldn't be allowed to do that. Yeah, they put their blinker on. They think it's okay. Mr. Chunesky, what are your thoughts on this? What, what would you recommend? Well, uh, first and foremost, you know, as council indicated, it's uh, we're grateful that you know you you call this to our attention. Right. Um, so uh, I'm going to follow up with the. Mr. Chunetsky, I don't think oh. they can hear you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Um, I, I just wanted to say that I'm grateful that you call this to our attention, um, and I will speak with the chief of police tomorrow about it. Okay. That's um, all I can ask. Thank you, William. And see well, if we can, can come up with some strategies other than enforcement that are more permanent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate call. your comments, Mr. Ball. Thank you. Mrs. Dixel. Welcome, Mrs. Dixel. Come on up. Uh, uh, well, Ms. Dix was coming up. Uh, we will also reach out to the property owners because in some cases the fire lanes may be faded. And so to highlight them mm -hmm. might reinforce the idea that they shouldn't right. be parking here. True. Good evening, Mrs. Dixel. Good evening. If you would please, uh, of course, yeah. just give us your name and address for the record. Nice to see you. It says you want to talk about the Board of Ed in Adelphia. Go right ahead. Hi, everybody. Barbara Dixel, the Villages, Hall Township. Okay, first of all, um, okay, the Board of Ed, I'm just a couple of things. Board of Ed, Hal Township. Uh, Monday, July 24th, 2006, legal notices. Board of Ed, notice of award, Hal Township Board of Education at its regular Board of Education meeting, June 21st, 2006, appointed Stephen Pepe, Esquire, as special counsel for municipal issues for the 2006-2007 school year at a fee of, hold on guys, not to exceed $350 an hour during the duration of the contract. Said contract and resolution approved, proving the contract is available for public inspection in the Office of the Board of Education, Herbert C. Massa, Assistant Superintendent Board Secretary. I am gonna take offense to this I, 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 I took offense when the comment was made about the uh, $50,000 uh, over 10 years, 5000 I told you I went to the Board of Education and raised hell and told them, listen, no Board of Education superintendent or anybody in this township has the, ha, should ever say, you know, well, we don't have to give you anything. We're not obligated. Listen, I told them, give us $10,000 over the next 10 years a year, period, for that police grant. I told him, I said, we pay your salary, we pay your salary, we pay your salary, and we buy every book, pad, pencil, and eraser in this town. And the fact that they keep saying they're autonomous and they don't have to answer to anybody is a bunch of baloney. Yeah, they have to answer to you, 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 me, and everybody else in this town because our property taxes pay their budget. They pay their salaries, they buy the kids' books, and they educate our kids. What's happening is they just are autonomous, and I don't really think they care too much. I think our Board of Education needs a wake-up call. I would appreciate I'm going to give you a copy of this. Our Board of Education needs a letter from the governing body. Would they please put their professionals on a salary like your guys are, like all of your boards are, or whatever. And I'm going to send this to the governor because I am fuming. The, ha the reval hasn't hit yet. So 
You know what? Let them keep doing this, and they're going to drive us out of our homes. Our Board of Education has to get a reality check. I'm, I, I, you know, like I said, I was, the, I was the liaison. I was all for the kids. I was 100% for every, educating every kid in this town. I'm not 100% for put, paying a lawyer 350 bucks an hour. Understood. It's a fair point. Put them on a salary. Put them on a something a lot lower. They don't have to make $350 on our backs. That's, I'm sending this. I'm, I'm really, <laughs> really furious. We can hear it. <laughs> now, I, listen, I believe educate the kids. Give the kids the books, the pads, the pencils, the education, the wonderful teachers. Don't rape the taxpayers of this mm -hmm. town. Just don't rape the taxpayers of this town. Nuts enough. Okay, that. Villages fence. How are we doing with the villages fence? Mr. Chernetsky, I see that Mr. Nunziato is not here uh, with respect to the villages fence. Is there any update you can provide, Mrs. Dixon, please? Uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Nunziato was on vacation this week, and uh, I was out last week, so we didn't have a chance to uh, follow up from our last meeting. Um, but, you know, I, I do have your pictures. Uh, there's a security issue that we're looking into, and um, there are a number of other site planning issues that uh, the planning department and engineering department is working with with the developer um, but beyond that I can't provide okay. any more information let me ask you something there were there were several houses that had structures or, or, or swing sets or digging or something that looked like a pool or whatever that were very close to the buffer maybe really practically almost on it um, has code enforcement or land use or anybody been out there to look at this stuff um, for a pool uh, a zoning permit would be required. I don't believe a zoning permit would have been required for a, a playground structure. Um, a permit would be required if you're removing trees or something uh, to put a playground set in a buffer area. Uh, were trees removed? Uh, I know? have no idea, but there's a bunch of digging. There's an orange fence on that one with the end there that I gave you. Okay. There are, according to Bill, there's deed restrictions on these houses, all of them. All, all of the houses on Quest del Gomerez. The seven houses on Cuesto de Gomerez and the two houses um, that are on Corso Italia that are exactly on the buffer with no 50-foot buffer at all. Man, they're on the line. The house, th th there, there is no. There's no buffer. There's probably no setback. It's smack on the line. So I need to know what's happening with that. As I said, when I went to Senator Singer's office with the maps, and now, like I said, I paid $18 for the officially signed maps, shows the same infringement into the buffers of the setbacks of these houses. Didn't change. It's still there. Um, right. I, 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 I agree that in the years two, 2001, it was permitted. Now it's not. You guys have an ordinance that says it's not. Well, again... Senator Singer said, tell them to bulldoze the houses. Of course, they couldn't do that. We want a fence. Yeah. We are entitled to protection. They did everything for the good and welfare and the profitability of the builder, but they didn't do anything for the protection and the welfare of the senior citizens of the villages. That they didn't do. After our last meeting, um, you re may recall that uh, Mr. Nunziato had a slightly uh, different interpretation of uh, the buffers and the setbacks and the requirements. Uh, so we did speak about the need for uh, the need for you and Mr. Nunziato and myself to sit down and make sure we're talking about the same thing and that we have the same language with respect to buffers and uh, what they mean and the definitions of, of them according to there our... There are no structures and buffers, period. Howell okay. Township. 50 foot, there are no structures and buffers. To me, I don't care. It may not be a house, and it may, but it's part of the setback of that house. Two to five feet of some of those setbacks in those houses, the, the rear yard setbacks are in that buffer. And according, when I went to Senator Singer, he specifically said to me, he said, you should be entitled to a fence on Mrs. Homeowner's property. Even if she's going to lose five feet or two feet from her property, she's going to know where her property ends. Too bad. Go, let, her go, let her go fight with the builder. I think Mrs. Dixon on this score... This did come up at the last meeting before Mr. Nunziato was away, and he was directed to look at the property, the lot and blocks you gave, and he was going to make a determination on whether or not, to your point, they are, in fact, infringing. So I think we need, in fairness, just to wait to hear back from Mr. Nunziato in terms of what he's discovered, what he's found out. I'm certain he'll report that back to Mr. Chernetsky. We do have a, another council meeting, obviously, a week from tonight. Mr. Chernetsky, I would just please ask that when he's back on Monday that we be 
prepared and fully vetted on the topic so that when Mrs. Dixel is here next week in the event she can be here, that we get her an explanation of what his review uncovered and what actions, if any, need to be taken to remediate that particular right, issue. Mr. Mayor, in 2001, that was permitted. Now it's not. Right. But, but when I went to the county, before I went to Senator Singer's office, the county delivered the same maps to my house. The county color-coded, and you know I gave you guys maps. You did. Color-coded the infringement into yeah. the buffer. Well, I think, again, we just have to, Mr. Nunziato had it. He was charged with looking into it. I'm sure he'll be in a position to report back okay. to us on what he discovered. Also, um, how are we doing with declaring historic, Adelphia area historic? Before a lot of new, we get a lot, a lot of new homeowners that are going to come in and paint these houses and alter them because if you get a house that's 200 years old or whatever, and that's part of house heritage and part past history, you don't want them banging nails in and putting siding up and putting every other thing up, and it's going to change. The, it's going to change. Well, I, I say I, I wrote it up last time. Yeah. There's a very old house on Wyckoff that just had siding put up on it. I don't know yeah. how old the house is. Here's what we've done, Mrs. Dixon. But I'd yeah. like to tell them to rip it down. In answer yeah. to your question, I sent a memorandum to Chairman Schneider, who's the chairman of the planning board, referring to your comments and asking him to please have the master plan subcommittee open up a dialogue on this, bring it to the full board's attention. And since they're in the process of still doing some incidental work on the master plan, that if they could, in fact, please take up that matter as expeditiously as possible. I gave this to you two years ago. You gave ago. it to the council a couple of years back, and the planning board at Begging that time them, had it. Pleading with them, make historic. There are yeah. because you've got so many real old, old houses. The Bethesda, mm. and there's another thing I want to ask you. Somebody send them a letter to the Bethesda Methodist Cemetery on Wyckoff Road. I want to know why that sign is down. It's the oldest cemetery. It's the founding cemetery. Howell's founders are buried there. Why is there no sign? It's missing. It's been missing for six months now. Mr. Chansky, do you know anything about this? It's the first time I've the heard of this. 1700s, early 18th. Why is that sign down? Yeah, I, I don't know that we have an answer. Can we identify who may be responsible for that property? I've, and I've walked that cemetery. Sure. When, when we were building the park and ride, and well, on the Adelphia issue, it has been directed to the planning okay. board. They've been asked to formally take it up uh, as, as soon as they can get the subcommittee together. Again, they do have outstanding issues. This is now one of them. There's history on that also. Yeah, there is some history on it. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, uh, there's, there's a the history. Methodist Cemetery. Some of the earliest founders of Howell's, Howell Township and were, that lived in Whitesville, that's now part of Jackson, that's the whole history of, of Howell and this area that went all the way to the railroad tracks. So all these people are buried in all of these local cemeteries and they are our ancestors they are our founders so we need to preserve their memory and we need to preserve sure. our township and Absolutely our history miss Dixley said there was a letter sent to someone did you say did I hear you right to send it to send you a, said there please, was a, there, there, oh, I, please send a letter to the Bethesda Methodist gotcha. Church uh, they're on a Delphia Road, but no, the okay. cemeteries on Wyckoff. So please find out why that sign is down. That so sign was very old. I misunderstood you. It I said thought seventeen hundred and something to you know it, it. It's not there, and I'm I'm not happy that it's not there. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Dixon. Okay. Mayor, if I may, Barbara I, made me start to think about a, the Board of Education. Mr. Chernixi, if you would please find out if all of the construction is completed on the. Howe Middle School South. I want to know if that's all been completed, if that's deemed complete, everything. If you, if, you, yeah, if you could just get back to me I, on that. Councilman Schumacher, that's the one on, on, on the Delphi, the right? one, the, the new one. Okay. I just want to make sure that I, I would like to know, I'd like to have something. It's Memorial. It, it's actually, it's the, um, yeah. it's Memorial, Memorial Middle School. Okay, but as I understand it, there are pro there were problems last year with the heating and the air conditioning that didn't work and they had to get it I'm not concerned about it. I just want to know if the project has been deemed complete. Great. And I'd like to have Good. that in writing from whomever over there. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Dixel. Uh, again, like I said, I'm, gonna, I'm giving this to you Please. guys. Please. I mean, in the strongest language possible, can somebody tell this Board of Education for the health and welfare and the pocketbooks of our taxpayers in this town, we got to stop getting raped. Our property taxes are going to make us move. You won't get any disagreement out of us. So. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Dixon. Somebody needs to beat, them, beat their brains in. Uh, Stan Horowitz, Mr. Horowitz. Welcome, sir. My name is not on that list. Mr. Horowitz. 
Mr. Sir, Maggot. I'll put it down. You're all set, Mr. Maggot. Hello, Mr. Horowitz. Welcome, sir. If you just give Thank us your you name and address for the record, please. Stan Horowitz, 25 Clare Circle in Hal. Good to meet you. Uh, I was very impressed by your ceremony. I was a fireman in Eatontown for several years, and those ceremonies mean a lot. They certainly do. Thank you. Uh, I'm here tonight because we have a problem over, I'm pretty sure it's called Lakes Edge Development. I've been in town for three years now. Lakes Edge? I think it, that's okay. what it's called. Um, it's right above uh, Aldridge Lake, okay. uh, off of Aldridge Road. Okay. And um, there's a speed limit. Uh, the subject I, I'm here tonight for is a speed limit reduction. Uh, between Aldridge and, uh, what is that? Um, well, it's Addison Road. OK. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, what does it lead out to? Fort Plains. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I'm at a loss tonight. Uh, it's listed as 35 miles an hour. We are in a residential, totally residential. And these days, people do tend to be about 10 miles over the speed limit, no matter what happens. And it's now turned into Fast and Furious. If you've seen the movie, we have cars that are doing better than 70 miles an hour up and down the road. It's a cut through. You know, for, to avoid all kinds of traffic, people know about it. Um, I have signatures from, and it only took me a half hour to get them, 16 neighbors of mine. And they're all in agreement. They're thanking me up and down for coming here tonight. And we're looking to drop the speed limit to 25. Drop the speed limit on Aldridge or on Addison? On Addison. On Addison. On Addison. Addison. Right. Claire runs into Addison yep. two times. It's a circle. So that's what they're cutting through, sir? They're cutting through on Addison? From Fort, Fort Plains, Plains, cutting Fort on Plains, Addison, through. coming down, and yeah. then over to Aldrich. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the proposal that we've come up with is to reduce the speed limit from 35 to 25, and also speed bumps. Coming from Eatontown, i got to tell you, they work. They really work. I don't know the expense. I'll be more than happy to find out. We but can we give you a little bit. We can uh, give you some history. Okay. <laughs> we'll give you an We'll give you an update. Um, <laughs> I have a picture here. Just uh, my wife took some pictures uh, this morning, actually. And these are new, brand new tire treads, tire marks on Addison. Uh, it's a little bit of a straightaway on a, from a sharp turn to go up to Fort Plains. And it's English Town Raceway. It really is. And one of my neighbors across from me, I live on the corner of Addison and Clare, my neighbor, uh, Frank Bitsko, who's a policeman in Red Bank. He's on the opposite corner. I believe he's contacted the Howe Police Department in at least two different occasions of a car ending up in his front yard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He can't let his kids play in the front yard anymore. He won't do it. Uh, I had occasion to help somebody out of their car in his front yard once. Uh, a couple weekends ago, and I'll make this quick, uh, two cars came around the turn, fishtailing, and uh, he actually, Frank Bitsko, actually got out in the road and stopped them and asked for their credentials. And I went out there just as a, you know, to make sure he knew I was there with him. And uh, one young gentleman had an international license. I guess it gives him carte blanche to drive in any country he chooses. I don't know how that works. And Frank let me know that there wasn't much he could do about it. The young gentleman was from Jackson. And we just let him know to stay out of hell, you know. And he was right back. This past weekend, he was right back doing the same thing. He came around the turn, and I just looked at him, and he laughed. Mm. I have a three-year-old daughter. All these, all these signatures, these are people with children. Mm. And it's downright dangerous. And I love this town. I really do. This reminds me of Eatontown growing up. Can't have it. Somebody's going to get killed. Let us tell you what we've been doing on this, this issue. This is probably the single issue that we hear more about all over the township. Speeding. There isn't a council meeting that it goes by where there isn't someone here talking about speeding. Uh, several things. We, we have purchased several speed humps. They are apparently here. <laughs> and we are awaiting the recommendation of where they're going to go and how they're going to get implemented. They are about $8,000 a speed hump device. Mm -hmm. And we are committed to, to putting them in the right areas. Under the law, they can only be put on streets where the speed limit is 25 miles an hour or less because of the concern of the trajectory of a vehicle 
if they are going over the speed limit. And that's a state law that you can only have them in primarily in residential areas. So mm. we'll come back to that. Okay. What we have done in other instances, we've had turns that are, are so dangerous that we actually, in, in one application, had to put a guardrail on a resident's home because they live on a bizarre corner, mm. on the corner of Vanderveer and Howell Road, mm. because on about a dozen occasions, a car li cars were literally going up on their lawn, taking out shrubs. Uh, and, and nearly careening into their home. So we, we've taken some drastic measures when, when necessary. We have a development where the cut through off Route 9 is so bad, we're in the process now of redirecting the flow of the traffic so that- Behind McDonald's. I behind, believe. exactly, I in the Winston that. Park area. Yeah, right. the, the problem is, is that there isn't a single solution, as you probably know, to get people to slow down. We can't have a police man or woman on no. every corner. But I think what we, what we have to do, Mr. Chernetsky, through you, is to please have traffic safety, look at this intersection. If, if what Mr. Harwitz is describing is the case, and we're certain that it is, we, we need to do a traffic study there. We have increased our budget resources to do that. The other thing, Mr. Harwitz, for your benefit is there is a state law that provides a formula that none of us are happy with that determines how speed limits are set. And if you talk to your police officer neighbor, I'm certain he will tell you that there is a study that gets done that evaluates the average speed of vehicles on a particular road. And on portions of, of roads like you're talking about, it is unfortunately that formula that gets used to determine the speed limit. We have portions of, Newton, of Newton's Corner Road that we absolutely are convinced need to be 25 miles an hour in Ramtown. And yet study after study, the police have come back and said, we are not able to change the speed limit. Uh, I've written personally to our senator and two assemblymen asking them to pass a state law giving towns the autonomy to change the speed limits. And to date, uh, the current assembly has refused to post the bill. They've refused to really entertain it. Not a criticism. They've had some other things on their plate, quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, but in any case, we are absolutely sensitive to this. <laughs> Mr. Chunetsky, can you maybe comment or elaborate further about what the Traffic Study or Traffic Safety Bureau can do? Uh, well, f for one thing, uh, We've been getting so many of these requests that we budgeted in capital budget for an additional uh, speed uh, measuring device yep. uh, tra and traffic counters. Um, so, you know, we, we have many uh, requests for these. Um, but, Mayor, I think you explained it, that uh, a request has to be made of the police department. Uh, so I will direct them to initiate a study of the road, um, both in terms of speed limits and whether or not uh, the speed humps would be uh, applicable in this instance as well. Um, what I would offer to do is uh, send a letter to each of the residents that signed your petition uh, with the police report attached explaining what their findings are. That would be definitely satisfactory. At least they'll know that somebody is doing or trying to do Absolutely. something. Yes. So just if I We'd be happy to do it, petition. and we'll certainly keep you, uh, we'll keep you posted as well. Are there phone numbers on there as well, Mr. Horowitz? Or maybe you could put your number on there at a minimum. Contact me. We certainly will. Anytime. And uh, I'm sure my neighbors will have no problem with uh, okay. whatever Mrs. I Schumacher, hear. I will sure. contact them as to what is being done. Okay. Mrs. Schumacher, you have a Tom, call. real quick. Um, you haven't been here long enough to know what, it, how, what a pet peeve this has been for many, many years. One of the things I had an opportunity to do this past week is go from Keyport over to Monroe through all those back, through all the towns, through all the back little roads. I cannot tell you, I went in and out of four towns and in and out of Old Bridge at two different areas because it goes through little towns where they have speed humps everywhere. They're in, they're in small communities where they, there's speed humps that are right in the road and it goes right down to 15. But for the six or seven years I've been here, I've been told by the police department we cannot have this in our community. What makes our community any different from Matawan or Old Bridge or um, Frio? Any, I can tell you. 537, you call them 537, 530, and this was one example that I've always said. 537 out past um, cr um, Burlington, going to Chesterfield towards Columbus Market. There's a whole er area that's what separates this town. We cannot have those in communities. I, I need to know that. What, 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 it, what difference is it here in Howell Township that other communities have them, and they're plentiful because I drove over all of them. 72 miles, and I hit um, a lot of them. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's actually two versions. One is a speed hump, and there's a speed bump. Right. One is, I guess, 
taller and more pronounced. I don't know whether Townships can use speed humps. Speed bumps are primarily in parking lots, but there is a particular okay. state law that describes they need to be speed humps. I could actually repeat size. my where I went and okay. show you the town. And these were roads. These were communities. It was Matawan. Yeah. It was Old Bridge. It was Keyport. There were areas. So I, I would like to know what, what makes us different. Okay. I, I, I know I uh, was told that uh, council received a report from uh, uh, a patrolman uh, bishop uh, and also from uh, the Morgan. consulting engineering firm uh, a we while did. back. Yep. Um, and I and I think it I think we need to schedule uh, for future workshop workshop session an explanation of uh, what the criteria is for reducing speed limits and the criteria for installing bumps and the distinction between the two. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll, we'll schedule that. Um, because I, I know there are DOT regulations there that are. explain exactly, you know, uh, when you can use them and when you can't. We actually uh, did the add most that. prevalent in downtown areas uh, where there's a high degree of pedestrian walking mm -hmm. and on-street parking and those sort of things. Uh, that's where I've seen them most frequently. Yeah, we no did actually did have that presentation once, Tom. It was two summers ago in the Ramtown School. Actually, we had this night in one of the schools. We could do that again, though. If yeah. Yeah, I know in Eaton Town years. it was in front of a uh, Memorial School, which is Grand Avenue off of uh, Route 36 from the Parkway, mm -hmm. and they were having a lot, a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So that's where the humps came in. It, it worked instantly. I mean, it was just. Well, we've actually begun at the planning board. I've begun. Mrs. Showmaker can attest to ask applicants as they've been coming in, will they agree to put in speed humps at their own expense right in new developments? Mm. And they've all been completely willing and happy to do it. Mm. So I, I'd like, we've, we've talked at the planning board level about making that a go forward requirement because we're most concerned obviously in, in neighborhoods where kids are playing and people are walking and Believe people me, have I'll, been interested in doing it. I'll shovel the asphalt, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it takes. Thanks for your comments. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Harwitz. Thank have you very night. much for your time. Thanks for coming out. Grace Abramoff, Ms. Abramoff, welcome. Everybody's 15 minutes. I'm doing everybody. Good evening, Ms. Abramoff. Nice Hello. to see you. Good, how are you? Next pet, pet peeve. Just if you wouldn't mind, Ms. Abramoff, we all know you, but for the record, if you'd introduce yourself and your Grace address. Grace Abramoff, 26 Glenmore Road. And just pull that kind of closer so they can, <laughs> everyone can hear you. The second peeve is litter. Litter, 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 litter everywhere in this town. Not only in this town, but like you say, Cynthia, when you travel the roads, I, I, I don't know where people were brought up. I really don't. I mean, coming here, I, I stopped at the library before I came here. And even our own library has juice bottles, juice cans, leaves from last fall that are still in, in the parking lot, weeds growing out of, out of the stone. Just, you know, it's like this gentleman. You're just so frustrated that everywhere you go, everywhere you ride, you see, I counted them, 10 signs from my house to here tonight, and from my house to McGill Road, there were 15 signs of all shapes and sizes. Uh, $10 an hour for this, uh, you know, you name it, there's a sign out for that. Uh, Mr. Chinetsky has a grand plan for how and how it's going to look, and I commend him greatly for it. But before you start building beautiful buildings, you better start cleaning your roads because the litter is going to cloud all of that. No matter where you go, you see it. And I don't know, who, we, we've discussed it many times, at who's to fault. Well, you know what? We're all to fault because we're all too damn lazy to pick up something in front of our nose and put it in the trash. Uh, you're talking about the schools uh, on 524, whether they were completed. And also the development, when you two people come out of your house, that's uh, Riders Development across the street. Are those developments completed also? Because what I'm wondering is the storm drains are above the road. The storm drains are above the road in front of the two schools on uh, 524. So the water just lays there. There's no runoff. Now, I don't know if that little bit of roadway is paved yet, so I don't know if that's in the final completion of the schools and that development. But the storm drains are about 
I would say about that much higher than the road. So of course there's no place for the water to go and all the garbage accumulates around them. I mean there's weeds growing everywhere. Now in this town we have a clean communities committee. I sat on it and I chaired it. There you also have adopt a road where you get uh, stuff from you know um, jackets and bags and rakes for people to adopt. I used to take care of that little site triangle across the street from our house tavern before they decided to change that with the cement curbing now that there's weeds growing all out of it. But there, there are things out there to be implemented to be used and I don't see it being used by the town. What does our clean communities do anymore? Do we still get those grants? We certainly do. There is a claims committee. Mr. Chancellor. I mean, I saw you had an ad in the paper for somebody or on your website for $9 an hour. Did you hire someone? Okay, what Mr. Chesky, why, why don't you yeah. give the, the total update on cleaning issues well, and the well, we, we have a clean communities coordinator, and um, the, the program's focus is on coordinating volunteer groups to clean up areas uh, it's around town. It's not being done. Nowhere well, is it being done. Well, Nowhere in this town. Well, there, there are volunteer groups like scouts, uh, different scout groups that we have. They may not always be appropriate to put on a public road where it's most That's visible. That's true, and park I know areas. we have the Department of Corrections who occasionally comes out and, and does it. And I know that that's a program that is run uh, really with the best inmates that they yeah. can find to trust to put out on our roads. But I see it on Route 18 where they let them out. They, have tr they put the trash on, mm -hmm. on the Thank side you. of the road in big plastic bags and then somebody comes along. Route 18 is beautiful from Eatontown to Colts Neck. You know, so I mean, some things work but I think we all have to take responsibility for it and, and start bending over. I mean, our, like I said, our own library has got junk there from the fall that hasn't been cleaned up. Ms. Abramov, if I can make a suggestion, I, I think I brought this up several years back. There's another community in our area, and I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Chinitsky, if it is Brick or Jackson. I think I want to say it's Brick. Their com clean communities, um, day they have an actual day it's it's just like our how day but this is a clean communities day where it's a big affair there where the whole community comes out they, that's how they use their funding instead of using their their grant however well, we I, use I remember ours. Mr. Chinetsky saying that when he first came here he had appointed everybody road duty no what what we'd like to do is we have point. to have something similar to that mm -hmm. exactly where uh, uh, public work all, all our employees who are on the road get a section of road to clean up Right. And that is uh, something that is, uh, we, we, as you know, we have a new public works director, and that is something we'll be coordinating. Well, I think that that should be on the top of the list, because there's mm -hmm. nothing worse than you, you, you have this wonderful plan for us, and, and it'd be wonderful. I mean, even our existing buildings are okay. I mean, the library is beautiful. This building is beautiful. The police department is beautiful. But it's covered with trash, one way or the other. Um, yeah, I think we get it. Ms. Everett, one, one of the things I can tell you is that we've, I've opened up a dialogue with one of the scoutmasters for the Boy Scouts. And I have asked that this one particular scoutmaster arrange a meeting with all of the different troops in the town so that we could work with them to establish a day a month with the different scout troops, because they are pretty geographically distributed, where they would agree, provided it's a safe haven roadway. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're not going to put kids on Route 9, mm -hmm. but in areas that it's safe and it gets coordinated through the DPW well, you know and the, the manager, big, the biggest that we send out the Boy Scouts right. and that we use your, them as a your, community your service. Your big detention basins are terrible. Your jug handles are, I think, the worst because anytime anybody goes they're around the jug handle, I guess they're throwing it out. Yeah. You know, so I, you understand my <coughs> grievance. And then one, when Mrs. Dixel was talking about preservation of uh, ho houses and their colors, uh, can you tell me the status of the house on the corner of 524 and Havens Bridge Road? I have lived here 45 years, and it still has a scaffolding out front. No idea. Does anybody know the house that I'm talking about? Corner of 524, Havens 524 and Havens Bridge Road. The brown it's, house? it's a greenish brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know which one I'm talking about? Mr. Chunetsky, could you have someone look into Who that? Who owns it? I no one. I, I, I don't think it's ever been inhabited. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know that we have. But I do know the house that you're speaking right? of. Yes. And then the other one, in Adelphia, the little, the little grist mill. Is that actually an historical site, do you know? Could you give it actually a is a little mill 
for Mr. Chunietsky's benefit, given where that's located? Downtown Adelphia. Okay. By the blinker light, because that's it. That's the town. The oh. blinker light and Cumberland. Well, it's not Cumberland oh, yes. anymore. There's a little, at uh, one time, I'm sure it was a mill. It looks like it on the side. Of that has sat there for 45 years also, never anything ever going on with it. Oh, what's and where the porch is hanging, where the things are just hanging there. There's nothing no, well, that's, that's somebody lives house. in that house. Somebody lives there. Somebody lives there. But, you know, so, you know, we have to have pride in our community, and it all starts with us, and we all have to do. One more thing, and I'll be sure. Silly season is coming, and signs are going to be put out. Freehold Township has an ordinance that you must pay up front before you put your signs out. I think that Hal should institute that, not only with political signs, but with all signs, that if you want to put a sign in the ground, you pay a okay. fee before you put is it, it the up. Borough or the township the that has township that? The township has it. Can you get a copy of that, Mr. Chernyevsky? Because there is no one after the fact that takes these signs down. They're just laid down to rust and, and uh, paper to be strewn about. So make it uh, an ordinance, if you can look into it, that you put a fee up before you put a sign up. And that way, if you have to take it down, the town is getting reimbursed for it. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Moff. Thanks for those comments. Uh, Ms. Angela Dalton. Ms. Dalton, welcome. Come on up. Good evening. Angela W. Dalton, 13 Madeline Court. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor, members of the council, I have some questions about the revaluation that's sure. going on in the town. Um, I was looking at the ordinances or the resolutions that were passed in order to uh, approve the, re the reval. And I noticed that uh, while the contract for services by Realty Appraisal Company was for $1,099,000, the budget appropriation for that, I'm sorry, the emergency appropriation for that was $1.5 million. Can you tell me what the other $401,000 was for? Mr. Chunietsky, I know that the CFO is not here, but could you uh, elaborate on the details? Yeah, I wasn't here when that contract was awarded, so I don't know. Okay. I don't know the specifics. Can we pull the entire contract? It's a public document. Yes. And identify what that is. I think that there are some front end and back end expenses, as I recall, that are a part of that, but I don't know that we're able to. I don't know specifically. Okay. Uh, well, what's your wha answer? Thanks. Okay. Uh, one question then. Uh, do you know if that would have included the cost for uh, appeal counsel when the tax appeals come? Is that part of it? Or That's is a that a question. separate expense? Uh, Mr. Gannon, can you comment on whether or not you've been through reevaluations before? It's the first time there's been one in this town for a while. Would the legal expenditures normally be included? Is that the process? I don't think so. I don't believe so. But there might have been expenses for the tax maps, which must be upgraded prior to the reval. So that could be a function of this that's, additional. That's not an inexpensive process. That takes a lot of time, engineers, so that could have been in there. If I recall, the tax maps have to be, had to be updated. That's what, be, that's what delayed us from the beginning. Do you, do you guys recall that mm -hmm. on council? There's no question. There was a, the county was also delayed. But as far as when they... Oh. They gave us a brief, because that's not something that we do. They gave us a brief um, overall of what that was going to entail. And I do believe, that, do not believe that that had anything, there were any um, fees involved in that as far as anyone. Your second question, when you were asked about the, um, or the, attorney, the legal fees, there were no legal fees involved in that particular fee. It was we don't know what the challenge is. No one really knows in, until it happens what the challenges may be. Right, but understandably, when you do a reval, the, the amount of tax appeals y invariably Absolutely. is going to no go up. Absolutely. One of the things, though, that we had to consider was what budget to put those funds in. Knowing the reval is taking place now, those legal challenges are not anticipated to come that would require action until next budget year. Right. So rather than putting this budget year unnecessarily, as I recall from what the CFO had recommended, it's anticipated to be an expenditure for next year. Right. So the legal component will likely take place in the 2007 so municipal budget. So then you'll get back to me on the 401,000. Yeah, there's no question. We have your address. I'm going to give it to the manager. It has your phone number. Can we get a call to Ms. Dalton tomorrow as soon as you talk to the CFO? Sure. You need a copy of the contract? No, I don't. I have a copy of it. Okay. Uh, I also understand that it's dated, of course, May 18, 2004. Uh, Ms. Shoemaker 
explain perhaps one of the reasons for the delay the maps. Uh, is was the maps. Yeah, the county wasn't ready to execute it and neither was the municipality because of the long process that you have to have all of the maps upgraded and ready before you can initiate the process. It was, okay. a, it was a long delay. Sure, because it wasn't until August of 2005 that the tax uh, division actually approved it. That's correct. That's okay. correct. When the county decided it was acceptable to proceed. But it appears that there are 13 inspectors doing the reval, uh, yet it's taking a lot longer than anticipated. I, I don't know that that's um, completely accurate. The CFO did indicate that we anticipated it would be this fall before the, the, those were completed. What the updates we've gotten from both the tax office and the CFO has been many people are just not home. Okay. Uh, and it's very difficult to, to get them scheduled. But the plan all along had been, is my understanding, was that around October, October yeah. is, is when all of those would be completed. And they're largely on course to, to meet that, with some exceptions where certain people have asked for special consideration in terms of when they're home, when they're at work, and the company's been accommodating them. When well, I, in I inquired into the schedule and I was told, uh, you know, we're, we're on schedule for the early fall. Uh, 2006? <laughs> I think it's a 2006. I mean, I think that was the projection that the finance department had given us. It, it just seems to me there are about 22,000 residences, not counting the farms, and the uh, residences in vacant lots that have to be evaluated. The Hal Messenger says we've got 11,000 so far. There's another 11,000 to be done. Uh, that yeah. My um, math puts us sure. in around January or February before we're done. The problem with the Messenger is it's kind of like um, the, the telephone book. The, the time they go to print when the material is due uh, is not necessarily reflective of what's actually taking place at the time it gets printed and, and gets to our mailboxes. I don't profess, none of us could have what the number of houses are that they've completed, but Mr. Trunetsky, based on this comment, could you have for us for this coming week's meeting um, an assessment, are they falling behind and we're not aware of it? Because the last report from the Chief Financial Officer was that they were on target, they were expected to complete them this fall. So if that's not the case, then we need to know about it. And I don't know that anybody up here, we have not been given an update that that's not the case. No, I will say, okay. Ms. Dalton, that we, I think every one of us have asked on a month-to-month on a -month basis, are we still on target? And it, it was conveyed to us from the beginning that October would be the, air, the time when we would have a, uh, some type of um, final numbers. One of the questions I have, and perhaps even it's just a suggestion, Mr. Mayor, you indicated that well, part of the problem is a lot of people just aren't home. Most, many, if not most, families in our town work. have dual uh, working families. I, myself, my, I have caretakers at home who won't let an inspector in if my husband or I are not home. Are these inspectors coming out on Saturdays? Are they coming out at night yeah. to you get this done? Do you want to go ahead, Mr. Trunetsky? If uh, w when a special arrangement needs to be made, yeah. they will come out. They go to the door. They attempt to make contact during the daytime. They leave their information. The person is asked to call back, and then they'll make a scheduled appointment when the homeowner can be there. And that's what they've been doing for people who both work during the daytime, who may work an evening shift. So that, that's been the process. And this firm has, they were the low bidder, that's why they won the business, but they've done this in other municipalities like Jackson and what have you. Mm -hmm. and, and we haven't gotten, most of the complaints we've gotten are people who don't want the process to take place, and that's all of us included. Few people have said they haven't been flexible uh, in terms of accommodating their own uh, schedules. Uh, one f final question. A lot of my neighbors and people in town have been saying to me, oh, well, we must have been reevaluated because my taxes have gone up so much. That would be well, the Howell Board of Education. <laughs> what are we doing to let people know that the revaluation's not done yet and we haven't, we haven't seen those results yet? Well, candidly, we've, we've provided several updates. The messenger was, was one of them. Most recent one. Um, unfortunately, absent incurring new expenses to send everyone some sort of a notice, there has not been anything. I don't know, Mr. Trunetsky. Well, it's online, isn't it, the schedule? It is online. Uh, there is information on the township website uh, about it. Uh, but perhaps we can ask the CFO if there is some way, maybe through the clerk's advertising budget, because we do have an advertising budget, if the clerk could take out an ad that just says, general update, the reevaluation is obviously not completed. Uh, and in the event you have any questions or comments, to, to call the tax office. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Thank you. Mr. Howell, Mike Howell, welcome, sir. Well, 
Hello, Mike. Hello. Mike Howell, 1A Newton's Corn Road. Mr. Mayor, it's good to see you. You're looking a little better spirits this week. Than you I'm always in good ago. spirits, Mike. You sound better. Uh, you just kind of caught me off guard. You said that the realty appraisal company got the job because they were a low bidder. I thought they were awarded the contract. There was no competitive bid. No, we had, we had more than one proposal. Uh, the, the, the township solicited proposals from more than one entity. We, we have to, by law, for a job of that I thought size. I remember reading something where it said they, it wasn't a competitive bid. They were given a contract based on their unique credentials. No, certainly credentials play into it. I mean, there, there is a criteria, but th they also were the most competitively priced firm. And that, that certainly that's my recollection, Mr. Chinetsky. If, if, if we hired someone that was more expensive than another credible firm, I think we'd have a problem. Knowing Mr. Filiatro and his affinity for conservatism, I'd be surprised if there was someone that could have done it for less. Yeah, again, I wasn't here when yeah. the contract was awarded. Mr. Uh, Gannon, can you I comment on, uh, fr from a, a bid perspective, it's a pretty sizable job. What would, what would a town have to do on something like that? This is done pursuant to the Department of Treasury. They set the specifications. They review the contracts. And it's not a sealed bid, per se, but it does require proposals. And they look at every uh, aspect of it besides the borough or the township. So they actually set out the specifications so that they, uh, there's uniformity with regard to this process throughout the state. and. Uh, I think we solicited bids, not in the s in, in sense of sealed bids, but we did get proposals. The assessor, along with the uh, division of taxation, uh, then made a recommendation. I believe the contract was approved by the state also. All right. Th uh, and one of the reasons that uh, I wanted to come up here this evening was I went to the barbecue at the Adelphia Firehouse over the weekend. And I was talking to a gentleman there who had a, a problem with one of these inspectors. A fellow came in the house. That this, this individual I was speaking to built his house in the 40s. 25 years ago, he upgraded his kitchen. The inspector came in and looked at it and said, this isn't the original kitchen. This is certainly going to cost you more in this reevaluation. Went outside and looked at his 40-square-foot Sears Craftsman shed that had one screw left in it and said, and this is going to cost you more, too. So I, I think it's time now to call Realty Appraisal again and say, hey, look, you need to tell your inspectors not to comment, just measure. That's all you have to do, measure the building. We, we have been collecting complaints. And in a town of our size, invariably, there's going to be issues. Um, I'm no big fan of the process, but in fairness, anytime we've delivered a complaint, we've actually encouraged people to get the name of the person and people have called us. They've emailed us and said, so-and-so came to my house. And to Mr. Chernetsky and Mr. Filiatra's credit, they've called. And, and, and my, my suspicion is, I think, that those inspectors have been read the riot act. Yeah. Uh, but do you happen to, would you be kind enough, maybe not in this public forum, but if you'd be so kind as to share the name of that particular person you've talked about with Mr. Chernetsky, it's worthy really of a follow-up so right. we can find out who visited this gentleman's home. Because it's tough for us to call the firm and say, someone among your 18, 20 people did right, this. I, no, I understand. Once we give the example, so if you could, off the record, you know, mention the name, we'll, we'll get it done because we don't want these people going around making those kind of comments. All right. And uh, I, Billy's not here. I was trying to get an update on what the status of the repairs on Ramtown Greenville Road were from New Jersey American, as we had discussed. You know, yeah. School's out now. Fix it in these two weeks before school's open, and we've got to reroute mm -hmm. all the school buses. Could, could we, Mr. Chernetsky, be assured? I mean, he, that was a follow-up for him to get back on. Yep. We need to know the answer to that quickly. And if we could circle back to Mr. Howell as soon as we get the answer in advance of you know, the next meeting, please. And then finally, I got my tax bill in the mail after the government decided they want to go back to work. Uh, <laughs> one thing that happened to me is I moved okay. from one home in Howell to a new home in Allen. I, I didn't mean this government, I meant in Trenton. Right. Uh, I'm a disabled veteran. I get a $250 tax credit on my property taxes. They don't automatically transfer it from one property to the other. When they see a home purchased in Howell Township with a VA mortgage, pretty much means it was a veteran. 
they don't automatically give you that credit. Unless somebody tells you that that credit's available, you don't know about it, and they don't go retroactive. I was here for the first three years that I lived in this town and didn't know about this credit. Mm. If there's a way that we can get it out to, you know, residents that are here now or maybe put, have asked the realtors to put something in their offices, you know, if you purchase a house in Howell, ensure that you send a copy of your DD-214 and your honorable discharge to the tax assessor's office for that credit. Mr. Howell, what we'll do, that's a terrific point. Um, I'll circulate a communication to the township at large. We have a general update. We've been working with uh, the VFW, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the VFW. Yes. On taking over the former OEM building. And I have an announcement that we're working on coming out about that, and I will include a note about it. I'm also uh, wondering if we could perhaps send a, a note to Senator Singer, and, and maybe it should be the law that it automatically moves with you because we can try and communicate it as best we can, and some people don't get the, they don't get the communication. Right. So could we perhaps send a, a note to Senator Singer and our two assembly persons asking them if they could potentially sponsor legislation that makes this an automatic? If you've gotten it once, you don't not become a veteran anymore. Right. Make sense? Okay. You know, especially if you're staying within the same township. Sure. Well, they have it on file. I mean, if you move, it doesn't change your veteran status. Right. Okay. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Thank Hall. you very much. Mr. Jack. Brandon, Mr. Brandon, welcome, sir. How can we help you, Mr. Brandon? Uh, Jack Brandon, 16 Woodland Drive. Um, with the reval, uh, and you were saying it's on track for um, October tentatively. When That's when they expect to be finished with the inspections of all the houses. When will we actually see a estimated? Um, I guess ca recalculation of our taxes at that point with the new assessed value with the reduced rate that it should be calculated at. Do you have an answer, Mr. Chernetsky? I know this is not yeah. your forte, and the CFO I, I, I does believe, not happen to be here. Well, when, when I last looked at the schedule, I believe it was January. That's All right, great. because um, I, I be think we out. only have until April to file a, the appeals, right? an appeal. The appeal. Yeah. That, that, is that enough? Time window to get. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I got a funny feeling you're going to see a ton of appeals come through. Yeah, mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's uh, a it's a fair question. I mean, Mr. Gannon, I understand there isn't there a statutory requirement that if this got done in March, for goodness sakes, you know, all the completions are done in October. I, uh, what, what's the, the statute? The way it should work is that October 1st, of the pre-tax year, is when they should establish. Uh, that's the date for establishing the value. Okay. okay. And then sometime, probably in January, if not earlier, they'll set up a series of what they call informal hearings. Okay. So at, between that window of time, they have the ability to adjust it, even though you get the initial. And the idea is to uh, avoid as much uh, appeals based on the fact that there's such a large number of li line items. There could be some differences, and there could be some field uh, changes that have to be made. And at that point, they'll try to uh, square it with the taxpayer. Uh, and then you, you have uh, April 1st to file the tax appeal, which is basically one, it's a very simple thing. You just file it and then you get a, a call uh, to go to the county tax board a couple months later and you can present your evidence. But uh, that's generally the way it works so that everybody will get an opportunity to uh, have an informal sit down with representative of the assessor's office or the reval company if you think that you're uh, uh, assessment is out of line. And then when if that, you're not successful there, they'll tell you you have to April 1st to file the appeal. When will we know the recalculated rate? Uh, you have to have uh, Jeffrey to tell you that one. Yeah, I, I think in fairness, that this is the CFO's bailiwick. He doesn't yeah. happen to be at this meeting. Right. But we can certainly, we can get you that answer. I'm just curious. So, yeah. like well, the rate a, uh, Mr. DeBasco okay. may, may, may be able to comment. He's Again, it would be a 2007 rate. So the 2006 rate right. wouldn't be affected. And the 2007 budget isn't normally approved till June. So <laughs> the rate then, that answer probably won't be until about the June time from just to what, give you a What they'll ball. do is they'll strike it around January based on the old rate and then just adjust it for the, uh, the new value. Can, can, can we do this much? I mean, these are all very good questions, and this is a complicated topic for, for everybody, and this town hasn't gone through it in some time. Some of us didn't live here the last time the town went through this. In it the was 89, 90s. I remember, yeah. and it was applied in 91, and, and when people actually got their tax bills, 
uh, I was here, and, and actually people filled this chamber out the I'm front sure door and did. down the steps, and um, it, it, it was a, put it, and needless to say, very heated meeting that night. Well, it was also a very tough real estate market back then, 89, 90, 91. Yeah. A lot of people lost a lot of value in their homes, and then the taxes were going up at the same time. So it wasn't a great time in the state of New Jersey for homeowners. Can we, Mr. Trinetsky, ask Mr. Filiatro to put together a text timeline of here is here is when we anticipate the reviews to be completed of the homes. Here is when we would expect a recalculated estimated tax rate. And then also some timeline with respect to when that appeal process would take place in anticipation of a lot of these. I personally get, and you all see them on the administrative end, a lot of emails from, from residents on this topic, and we, we're getting the answers for them. But it might make sense to just yeah. put together a, an updated broadcast. I've done a few of them on the reval. Uh, but as we're getting closer to the end of this, it probably makes sense to do that again. So if you'd get that to us. And if you could maybe just get a sidebar response to Mr. Brannon about when we expect to get it. What else do you have, Mr. Brannon? Um, the minutes from the meetings, when we had the lightning knock out the electronics here for a couple of meetings where it wasn't recorded, uh, the posting of the minutes on the website, was that stopped at any given point? It hasn't been updated since May 23rd. The they, minutes they, of the meeting have not been on since May? Yeah, well, they, they get updated as council approves the, the minutes. If the minutes aren't approved, then it's okay. not yeah, post. Yeah, we generally approve the minutes in, in lots of multiple meetings once they're, they're ready for okay. our consideration from the clerk. So the process hasn't changed because we've had fewer meetings in the summer months. We just haven't had, I suspect, for this coming agenda, there's probably things on there to, uh, to be approved. But well, the only the reason I ask is because there was some electronic malfunctions here, and there was a meeting or two that I couldn't make it, and I'd like to just sure. have been able to which, review which it. Which particular the, meetings? Uh, the audio recordings are available. Are they available? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't aware of that. All right. If you want to contact the clerk, I'm sure they okay. could get that information to you right away. That's fine. The other issue is about the signs around town again. Um, I, if you drive around Howell, I mean, it's just all types of signs, not mm -hmm. one individual mm -hmm. type of sign. It almost looks like there's a flea market in town. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's out more. of control. It I is. mean, you got people put up garage sale signs. They're supposed to be up for a weekend. They're up three weeks. Um, again, it, it's it's all types of signs. It's just not one type of sign. Is What's the ordinance of this town? Mr. Chinesky, can you, again, not to put you on the spot, I don't know, without Mr. Nunziato here uh, or someone from code, there, there is a regulation. Do you have any sense of, of what that? It's right online. The ordinance. I mean, it is, it is online. Well, I, someone it, has their it's laptop not being up. enforced, I can tell you that. It, yeah. what, I, what I can tell you is that, um, in, in my tenure here, there was a time when the town got real tough on them, yeah. and then all the real estate agents complained to the Chamber of Commerce that their signs were being taken down. So we, we've seen it from both extremes. I, I happen to have it on my little tick list to talk about later. Signs are out of control. Work for ten dollars an hour. You know, meet, your, meet your husband or wife online. They're everywhere. And, and the problem is that some of our own residents are putting these out there, and then they're leaving them there. Yeah. So we we've got to crack down and send code enforcement on a two-day expose and take them all down. Just rip them all out. No, why, why are we doing that? We'll, why we'll are we do calling that. the number? But you can you call the number on some of them. We got to just, sign, just track just, the address I mean, down. We can, we can call them later once we collect them all. But, but the place looks like a, it, it looks terrible. I mean, on the way to this complex, I pass three or four of them, get a job working from home for $9 an hour. It, it, it's, un, it's unconscionable. <laughs> I think I saw one for nine. You probably saw another one. <laughs> but we will send a crew out to collect those signs, those $10 an hour things, and things posted on like posts. You're, you're absolutely right. It, we, we've all had it with it. And unfortunately, everyone needs to also self-regulate. Oh, I, I because agree. Because the people that are putting them up often live down the street, and then they leave them there. The only thing is, Mayor, if we continue to take them down, they're going to continue to put them up. We need we need to Agreed. work backwards at it. We need to we need to go back to the person. If it takes calling the number, and and do some enforcement that way, because just send an, Why should the taxpayers send out DPW to pick up yeah. trash? Is being put. You know, it's an ongoing process. My, my only concern is I don't disagree with you. I think we have to come up with an ordinance Correct. that provides us with the ability to take them down and fine people. And you, yes. you, you get a fine. You're going to get a bill, or you need to come in and, and get approval before you can put them up. But on the short term, we got to take them all down. Because yeah. if we wait to call all these places, by the time they come back to us in the interim, we got three months of it still looks like a yard sale all over the community. You got it. So can, can you, Mr. Trinetsky, 
work this thing through, come back to us with what other towns have done by way of best practices so we can make this a non-issue, because this is an easy one. We're not trying to get people to slow down from speed. We have a pretty good ordinance. We have a pretty good ordinance, and what does it allow us to do? Mr. Gannon, what does it allow us to do? It allows us to take them down. It allows, it provides that there should be permits, and it allows for fines. Well, then, then the issue we have is that it's been a, for whatever the reason, there's been a lack of, of enforcement. So we've got to get on this and get it enforced. And if the ordinance allows us the latitude to do it, then I have to say that, that we haven't been getting it done on this. So we've got to get our people to get on this. Everybody agree? Absolutely. Okay. What else, yes. Mr. Brown? The other uh, issue I want to thank you all for passing some kind of height ordinance in town. The one uh, issue I brought up last time was about the SED zone, and it was, something was clarified for me prior to the meeting. Will that be addressed uh, shortly as well with some kind of height restriction or, or guideline or something sure. for the Mr. SED Chunetsky zone? Mr. Chunetsky, let yeah. you respond, um, please. I think when we deal with the standard zoning, for, in terms of the schedule of when we're going to review the zoning ordinances, we can address that at that point. And when should, when okay. should we get that schedule? Uh, we, we provided you with the general. Uh, I'll, I'll give it to you again. We uh, we've mm -hmm. given yeah. it out a few months back. Yeah. And, uh, so it's going to be addressed when we go through the, the regular code updates? Yes. So okay. Yeah. okay. Is there any sense for Mr. Brown's benefit? Are we talking a month, two months, five months? No. Well, well if we said the first thing we wanted to do was the uh, hotel and the uh, design standards, which we've now introduced. Right. And then in September, uh, we'll, be we'll be bringing forth the next set of uh, okay. master plan implementation zones. Okay. So we, for his benefit, to give this gentleman a timeline, Within three months, we think we'll be SED ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. What, one last thing. May, I, may I just I, to comment on that. Th through the design standards and the criteria and the bulk requirement regulations, there is, although there is not exactly a specific height, there is, based on the size of the lot and the setbacks, there is an indirect regulation. Okay. So it's not as if we don't have any right. type of there, regulation. There are some guidelines. Somebody can't go on a right. two, two acres. Because of the site. Correct. 50 the stories. Size. The, the other issue, um, I know there was a uh, hotel ordinance that was introduced um, for review, and I brought this up last time, um, for the HD1 and HD2 zones, the height restriction is 45 feet, and the hotel ordinance is stated at 50. Uh, as I s stated in the last meeting, I would like a uniform ordinance for those zones, because the hotel falls within those two zones, HD1 and HD2. I think if you're going to make it 45 feet, as I said before, then you make it all 45 feet. If you're not going to make an exception for a hotel ordinance for 50 feet, because then at that point it almost looks like spot zoning again for a particular use. It should be 45 feet, period. If that's what it is, then that should be exactly what it is. Either that or amend the height ordinance to 50, but there shouldn't be an exception for one use, period. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Thank Brennan. You. We appreciate your comments. Mr. Maggot, welcome, sir. Come on up. Yes, I'm a, a maggot. <clears throat> I do live at a very nice place called 89 Mariner's Cove in Howell, which is also a very nice place. In fact, it's a remarkably nice place. Megan, if you'd kind of pull the microphone a little bit closer to you, I don't know that they're getting you on the recorder tonight. Yeah. Oh. Now, <clears throat> it's been such an uplifting night of constructive things that before I go on my time, which has to do with data, Mr. Tabasco, new data for the uh, master plan, new data, 
I, I also want to mention about the roads, just constructively. I use that post office, that small post office, remarkably friendly, wonderful people on, on Wyckoff Road. And I want to acquaint this township how serious it is and near misses and serious accidents just whisking by because people park on the street, not mm -hmm. the street before the post office, but right in front of the post mm -hmm. office on Wyckoff. Mm -hmm. They do it when the parking lot is half empty. Now, the reason it's so serious is, I may sound aggressive, but basically I'm a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> when I come out of that parking lot, and there's a couple of cars, or even one, usually there's two very often, because, you know, rubbernecking. One, somebody sees a car, they say, oh yeah, that's where I can park, right? Another car. I barely inch out, and I do have to look back at the, what is it, Delphia Road on one side, and what's coming up the Wyckoff Road from the other end, and if I can't see them, because the cars are blocking my view, they can't see me. I happen to be one of these, what they call, elderly people that feels he's 18 from the neck up, I told you. So I'm pretty alert. I've seen, and that post office is used with a higher ratio of elderly, what I call elderly people. And some seem not to be doing what I'm doing. And it's really been what they call by the grace of God, you haven't had a really deadly accident. What I'm recommending is this, and to be enforced strongly, if, if our uh, regulations allow it, that cars that are parked along the sidewalk, a front and out post office, no ifs, ands, and buts, are ticketed to the maximum fine that can be done. The nice thing about that is, word gets around, <laughs> and it'll be a nice clean sweep. And I haven't liked it and until I heard about the roads tonight. Didn't mention it. Busy with other things, obviously, but I should have. The second thing about the roads is, <clears throat> in Freehold, when you go down, I believe it's Stillwell's Corner Road, as you approach their center, or somewhere along the road, which is 35 miles an hour. I recall they have a nice little bright sign that's recording the miles that you're going. I notice it has a nice pacifying salutary effect on the people when they see a number like 40 or something, say, oops, I might get a ticket, and they start to slow down. <clears throat> By the way, I haven't seen that on Iron Bridge Road, or maybe it's there, and, and they really should have it there too, because that one is 35, and that one, people don't like me when I'm on that road behind me, because they just whisk right around me. <coughs> I said, I'm a chicken. Something else occurs to me about these signs, <clears throat> and here is where simple engineering takes hold. It's not a back to the future concept. It's pretty simple, I think although I don't offer to design it. I, my engineering is from the Neanderthal man, you know, and they, they can do things now to just blow my mind, like a cell phone inside of a car in Lincoln Tunnel. It's incredible. What I'm saying is this. One, <clears throat> not only do we put some of these signs out at the appropriate places, but somebody look into, and I'm not in a volunteering mood or I would do it, but good old Tom, I'm sure, will <laughs> jump into the breach. So not only are the signs there, but when the limit is exceeded, say, by roughly five miles, click, we got a camera that takes that license plate. And that camera's not on all the time. And that's what makes it a little bit more interesting. And as I say, if I volunteered, I could probably dig up my cousin who's looking to get rich on a contract like that or something, but I'm sure these companies are around. To have a camera there, and again, 
the nice thing is those that don't take the first hint that they should slow down when they get a ticket. And by the way, I don't use Easy Pass. I just am just an old fogey. I just like to drop my coins in. But I understand if you go through too fast there, boom, you get a ticket. That's what I've been told. Maybe it's good propaganda, but you know, if they zip through it, what you know, because it's Easy Pass rather than dropping the coins. I'm the kind of likes to stop and drop the coins. There are other people, hmm, somebody I know very well, my wife, who <laughs> likes to ride through slowly and drop the coins. And that's our credit, but slowly. But easy pass, they can fly. So they must have, anyway, I'll sign off on that. If you can find out about the camera part, clicking on when they're over a certain number of miles, over what's allowed on the road, boom, we got them. So this is my uplifting for the road business. Now, I have something else that's a little uplifting. I think, Mr. Tabasco, you'll be very interested in this, called New Data, which throws out bad old data. If you look not so much at the, my first four pages, which I gave you because I expect you to read it, certainly not now, even with Evelyn Wood speed reading, you wouldn't get it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> showing my age. You know, Mr. Maggot, since you've been coming to these meetings, we got a note from Nielsen, the, the ratings are going through the roof. <laughs> well, you know about- I mean that in a very complicated again, way. Again, I mentioned that 40 years ago, I knew uh, a chap named Jerry Sonnenbrook who was a pretty young guy. We know and Jerry 40 well. years have gone by. Well, I spoke with Mr. Nielsen about roughly 55 or 60 years ago, and he was just a great, ordinary chap. So if you want to send him this, he's, he's not going to remember me. Tell him he was a great, ordinary chap. If it's Mr. Nielsen Sr., I don't know. Maybe he's one of all his cousins. I have no idea. Some tells me he may remember you, Abe. <laughs> that would be a miracle of Fatima. Because when I was uh, 25, I was only very, 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 so infrequently, hardly there, a memorial type of person. I wasn't bombastic. I wasn't pusillanimous. I was Mr. Average. And Mr. Nielsen could hardly remember. But if he does, Fatima lives. Okay. Let's get back to your data. Now, yeah. If you now take from the sheets I gave you, just my typing the first four, the last two pages, it has some data, and the, the first page is the important ones. Mm -hmm. And I'll make it very short, <clears throat> relatively short, New York City short. I'm indebted to Tom Zanetsky for telling me where to go to get the data. There is a doctor Urshel, who is apparently the authority of the nation on, at Rutgers, in a special department, which I've listed here, that says the number of children, yeah, at least in New Jersey, for any type of dwelling. Okay. So I called there, and I got the data. When I looked at the data, I think a miracle of Fatima did take place, according to Tom Zanetsky. Because when I got the data, sent to me by a Mr. Donnelly, or Donnell, name like that, and a very delightful young woman said, uh, well, he's a little busy at the moment, can he call you back? I said, I can understand he's a little busy. Let's try Dr. Burchell and I would be very indebted to you because it only takes one minute for me to ask him one or two questions. Sometimes I'll fib a little bit. You know. <laughs> the, the miracle of Fatima, according to Tom, is, it, it, well, there was a lapse of about, I don't know, 15 seconds. I guess the, the good doctor was dying to decide whether he wanted to really answer me. But he got on the phone. And when he got on the phone, <clears throat> after I humbly introduced myself, feeling a little homage to a PhD, I suppose, I should, 
My wife's about to get hers. She has a master. She's about to get her PhD. So I'll be calling her doctor, you know, doctor in a magazine. I don't know, <laughs> Dr. Rowan. <laughs> Just, just oh, she'll be seeing this. Oh, what am I doing? Abe, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I apologize for interrupting, but Dr. Bursell, more or less, you know how towns have a master plan? Well, the state has a similar thing. You know, he more or less writes it for the state, and he, he's the state's official demographer. I, I thank you, Tom, because he came on to me with a controlled strength that I recognized immediately that if I had more than one question, I better do some kind of a little kabuki dance, which I did. <laughs> and he was on the phone to me for quite a while. Oh. Yes, he was. I'd say 10 minutes. To his eternal credit, and maybe a little bit of my end. I have no idea. The main question of the new data, Peter Tabasco, is this. Tom Zernicki told me, and this data would indicate that what this Dr. Bissell defined as a condominium is, in fact, no ifs, ands, and buts by him. You can check with him, surely. A two-bedroom attached unit. That, to him, defines a condominium. And he said that the latest data that he could give me, <clears throat> the, mo the latest data was from the 2000 census. Nothing more current than that at all available. OK. I asked him also about the two-bedroom, single-family, detached. And he said, well, you know, that's a detached house. And then I asked him the question, which is, in this data of 0.09 units per attached two-bedroom condominium, here we go, Peter Tabasco. How much of that is for adult communities, retired senior citizens? He says, I can't tell you that. I said, well, what you're telling me is the point oh nine. He started to listen to me, actually. I said, the point oh nine. We have no way then of saying that that figure came from condominiums where there are families with children and, there can, and from condominiums where there can't be children because they're if condominiums for senior citizens. He says, yes, that's true. So you'll see from my paper, when you get a chance to take a squint at it, that data is useless. No longer can we say. No longer would we dare say that there's only one child for every 10 units of a condominium because it could be significantly more, depending on the ratio, when they took the census, of how many were senior citizens, where you're not allowed to have children under 19 or 8, no children to go to school. Then, feeling a little brave finally, I said to him, what about the two-bedroom detached house, not defined as a condominium because it's detached? How many of those in the survey were two-bedroom detached senior citizens, which is quite a common thing. Generally, even more than generally, almost axiomatically, single family houses for families, or, or rather than senior citizens, have about three bedrooms, may have four. Very few are being built with two. 
Again, he said to me, by now he was, I could see my time was short. <laughs> As it is now. Not necessarily, <laughs> but probably. How do you like that for a lateral? <laughs> Look how early to bed, rise, go. You don't get up at 5.30 like I do with my cat because he meows by the clock. So uh, there you go. I get up at 5.30 to go to work. There's no cat going with me. Oh, well, then I do feel sorry for you because after I feed the cat and squeeze him and hug him, I go back to sleep. But so what, in, in summation. Okay, here we go. All right. In summation. Not yet summation, but in close. So you'll notice that the figure of 0.19, I believe it is, yes. for a detached house still has no use whatsoever, because mm -hmm. you can't say one child for every five detached houses, because in comes lots of senior citizens. Mm -hmm. Now, Peter Tabasco, you asked for data. Maybe there'll be more. I am inclined to think so. But you better throw out the prior rule of thumb that I understand existed, that there was only one child for every 10 units of a condominium. That's out the window. Mm -hmm. You'll read my paper, you'll see why. Good. Now, oh good, no. No, we'll, we'll read your paper and we appreciate it. Oh, please do. Data. Please do. Yeah, read my paper, it's, appreciate I think it. it's right on. Okay. Now, <clears throat> of course we get to other pieces of data where you have townhouses, which could be two bedrooms, could be three bedrooms. And again, since you were so uh, hastening me along, I'll hasten myself with this final comment. It's a little lengthy, but not too lengthy. You can appreciate that. Look at my papers very seriously. Because at the last meeting I told you, and you'll see it in my paper, you are defining what's the future and how for people to be able to remain here. And one of the things I underlined in your message from the mayor of slowing down single family houses, that's a general broad brush meaningless nothing because welcoming to $800,000 houses and not welcoming and they are not building, but they might, s much smaller, single family detached. They're usually now attached because builders can make better profit. So I want you now to really bear down on your thinking because Mr. Tabasco, you made quite a bit of, they all work very hard and we do trust them and they're very competent and you said, you didn't think it would take place, but it might, depending on new information. You've certainly got new information now and probably a lot more to follow. I still have no idea what your point is. We're talking I'm minutes sorry. into the conversation. What do you think? I'm, I'm sorry, what, but what if do you, you don't about? follow my point, whatever I don't think you anybody had out, out there, there, you shouldn't have had. Because I'll be very direct with you. Get to the point. You're 20 Mr. Percent. Tabasco. I'm talking about your saying you didn't follow me. How dare you not follow me being alert when I say to you that your data was based on one child for 10 units of condominiums. It is not funny for you to smile. I have no idea what you're talking about, Abe. Well, I then I'll disregard you. I will disregard you. I, I didn't create the any data. The first time Shame on you. The first, second time, shame on me for even thinking to say it a third time. Ask your other people on the council. I've made Ask a very powerful... No, 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 I'm not interested in that. We appreciate Come your on. comments. We okay, no, I don't want to even... I'm trying to line up. Trying to line up. Calm, Calm down. Calm down. Come on. Well, I was until he said, Calm I don't know what okay. he's talking about. Calm I still down. don't. Mr. Mr. I Maggot. know that. Mr. Maggot. That's amazing. Just... So, wrap it up, please. here we go, with real, dead, earnest, calm ability. New word, Jose Cesaris. I want this council and you, Mr. Mayor, to think, as I say in my papers, of your obligations 
to the people who elected you to this office and have confidence in you, not just to make statements and speeches that you have their well-being in mind, but to think very strongly of what it would mean to bring in a significant number of condominiums. And you'll see in my paper, have you even touched how much lower the rate of it would be if apartments ever came in. Now, your next meeting is the 15th, I believe. Yes. Town Council, right? Yes, sir. Now, I'm, of course, interested in residential. What's coming up on the 15th? Is it just the Route 9 commercial and so on? I'd like to know. I, don't know. I was told last time I would find out. The, the only, the only uh, zoning matter uh, on the 15th is the hotel and the height. Okay. And then there's a design standard, All right. general design standard. I thank you for that. And I remember you said, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. I believe, to Mr. Zanetsky, to find out Put when will be the meeting of the residential. Mm -hmm. So that by that time, not only will even Mr. Tabasco, after reading my paper, not be so confused at what I'm saying, but he'll have more data, not only he. I hope that won't confuse you like children from units. You'll have more data, and it may be data that you haven't had before. Because if I were to ask you the question, how many children are coming from the townhouses in, in uh, Moore's Landing? I might hit dead air with you people. Let, let, here, here's how we're going to wrap this up. We appreciate your comments. Yes, and it's serious. It, it is serious. Uh, our planner obviously has access to all of the latest data. We haven't gotten any data from our planner with respect to statistics of people or, or children per home. That, that has not been given to us yet. So we have not opened up that debate. What we have from you will ensure that we don't look at any old data because the, the, the information you provided us from the Blaustein School is very helpful. And I'm going to ask Mr. Chernetsky, hold on, mm -hmm. that you get this to Mr. Newcomb, make certain he's got access since he's, he's the, our point person on this. And then when we begin to have our deliberations, he'll have it and we'll be using the right information. Okay. And finally, last item, one line. When you talk to Chuck Newcomb, I also want to know all about the affordable Mount Laurel number of units. I want to know all information as it is up to date and known. And if it's not known by the planning board at this point, then it should be known by the town council. Yeah, we, we have all that. Uh, we're compliant. We're working on a round three obligation. Can we, Mr. Chernetsky, have the appropriate person send Mr. Magid a copy of the state's round three criteria with respect to the affordable housing material? No, I don't want that. I want Howell to tell me, after they look at the document from Trenton, we, we, how many units in the master plan are listed. And by the way, last thing, does the master plan provide for apartments? Mr. Chansky, do you want to? Yeah, I don't believe it does. Uh, you don't believe or you uh, want to check it? I'm pretty sure it does not. Okay. Present time it does not. Mrs. Chairman has been well, here the last time this was done. We'll have this delightful time again soon. I'm so looking Thank forward you, to Mr. it. Thank you, Mr. Magan. Thank you, Mr. Magan. Thank you, Mr. Tabasco. Mr. Tintillo, you're the last uh, speaker of the night. Come on up, sir. He asked Mr. Tabasco to put his name on. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Tintillo. If you just give us your name and address, please, for the record. Thank you. Vinnie Tantillo Casino Drive. I got a pay from laughing. Abe, you got, you got Rodney Dangerfield beat, I'll tell you that. Mr. Maggot. Okay. Good evening. Go ahead, Mr. Tantillo. You have the floor, sir. What can we do for you? Mr. Tabas. No, it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about, can you make I, your point? I guess it was about two years, years ago when I put a suit against the town for the six acre zone and the two acre zone. Anyhow, we won. Uh, I think it was about two years ago. That's a pretty fair statement, I guess. Anyhow, 
uh, some of my neighbors put their houses up for sale. And I don't know if we're short people in a land use department or what, but every time somebody goes down there to find out, it says six acres. My neighbor just lost a sale on a house because of that. You got an updated map? Like the Why wasn't that changed? I had the updated yeah. map. Mr. Chinesky, would you please comment? There's a, the proposed changes in the master plan are on our website. Uh, and you can look at the map and the areas that are in yellow indicate what's proposed. And then there's a PDF document that explains uh, by block and lot, not the name of the resident, but by block and lot, right. what zone it is and what zone it's proposed to become for those that areas that are in yellow. All right, but this isn't proposed. This was changed right back to two acre zone. But there is. This a is a court order. Here there is an updated map with there your is. case there's result. There's an update. Yeah, but it was never evidently. Okay. When they go down here, they're telling them it's six acre zone. Here's the takeaway, Mr. Chinesky. We need to make sure we get to the zoning office because we voted to make certain that the map was corrected to reflect what it was prior to the lawsuit. We, we voted on it. The planning board talked about it. I was there when they talked about it. We have to make sure they're giving out the latest version of the map. Mr. Janicki, this is, this is the issue that I spoke to you and Chuck Newcomb and the Bill Nunziato about some time ago when the map, when we were doing the master plan. Do you recall that? Yes. Yeah. This is this, and, and Vinny, I have to tell you, I thought this was taken care of because I, no, that was no, the first business. thing. And we, I was told. I mean, I'm not selling my house, but these no, people, no, no, but she legitimately but lost a sale but, because but, of it. But you were right. The map, that should have been changed back at the time, and it wasn't. The, that map that even was presented during master plan should have had that change yeah, yeah. in there, and it did yeah. not. It's since been corrected, and we were assured. I've seen it. That right, we we all got copies of it. We were we were assured that everyone was using it. So if they're not, we got to make sure that they are. The zoning board may not have got those copies. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Gabe up here again. Just hey, you know. Anything else, Mr. Tintel? No, that's it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. That'll close the uh, the public portion. I have a, a few quick uh, comments, Mr. Chinesky. Items since we're here, uh, the the Pop Warner football complex across the road. We're not really in a position yet for the permanent infrastructure to be in place. So we have a commitment with the Pop Warner organization that when their events begin, that we will have a police officer or a member of the police auxiliary stationed there directing traffic at the intersection that we all know is a, is a, is a problem. So because we're still securing grant monies and what have you, we got to make sure that we coordinate with Mr. Swayze who was the league president, that they're starting, that there's people there tonight, in fact, yeah. uh, that we have that coordinated. There's some cones there now, but it's, it's, it's still an issue. And we also need to, to get an update from the county about our request to trade. We want access to this road so we can put the light in, since they won't, and we'll give them a different road. Okay. I, I can give just a, a, some, uh, please, uh, additional information um, about uh, Two weeks ago, we met with the county uh, traffic engineering uh, department, and we presented them with three different concept plans uh, that we wanted them to look at to do uh, safety improve traffic safety improvements uh, on that road. Uh, so we'll be meeting with them. They, they took the concepts back, so we'll be meeting with them again uh, next week, I believe, uh, to get their recommendations so we can start doing some of these things anyway, some of the obvious things. Uh, that can happen. We also met with a representative of Pop Warner this evening um, okay. where we talked to them about um, um, making sure they use get full access of our uh, movable lights uh, to light up the intersections um, and we'll definitely follow up with the police department tomorrow. Good. Thank you. Good. Okay. And then the other item I had was did we ever get a final update on the structural integrity of, I forget what it's called at the moment, but this this old structure on the corner of Route 9 and, and Casino on the one end and Burgerville on the other. Pine View Grocery. Pine View Grocery. That, that's got to go. And, and we were waiting to get word on whether or not we could enforce the demolition ordinance. Not just the grocery, but all the bungalows around it, it too. The, the whole... Yeah. I think there's people living in those the, the people may people actually not in all of them they can't be I think a couple I mean, of those bungalows just people living well, I mean the, the, the initial concern was we directed code enforcement whomever it can't was right. to go out and at minimum to look at that grocery store I mean that, that place is barely standing that's got to come down it's a terrible eyesore you're, you're coming from Freehold into our town and it's one of the first things you, you see you're not too far into Howell Township sure so if we can get an update on that yeah, please I'll include that in my manager's report okay on a Tuesday Sure. Let me start in this. And Mr. Debasco, you have any any Shh. folks? 
Hold on one second, folks. If you, no problem. Okay, Mr. Tabasco, you have any comments? Nothing. Mr. Walsh, any comments? No. Mr. Showmaker, any comments? Uh, I, I have a couple things. Um, Mr. Janicki, at the planning board the other night, um, during one of the hearings, a gentleman came out, uh, Mr. Jerry Jan Jankowski. He's at lot 18.01, block 78, which is over on F Friendship Road area. Friendship and, um, mm, what's, what's the crossroad? It starts with an S. I can't think right now. Anyway, it's, it's lot and block, block 78, 1801. He has a tremendous drainage problem over there that has been an ongoing problem. He had pictures. It, was, it went down, I think, three houses. It's a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous problem. I'm not sure what, what's going on there, but the pictures were very disturbing. There's some uh, building that's going on across the street, and he was very concerned that, um, that any of the drainage off the construction. He was assured that that would not um, had anything to do with that, but it does have to do with the corner house and the way the, the, the drainage is. I, I'm not sure what it is, but it's, it's a tremendous problem. He has made, he, he is a, an employee of the town, so he has made the DPW aware of it. I'm not sure if the engineer needs to look into it, but it's a hazardous problem because it is by, on Friendship Road. And it was, the pictures that he brought in, the water was out to the double line in the middle of the road. Was this in connection with the application? No. no. And that's what he was concerned with. But the engineers what, what he, what, assured him. Well, how did he address the planning board? Well, he thought it, he wanted to make sure that the, the development that was going to go across right, the street so it was, was related, not. It was related to And they assured him. The engineers took their time. They went over it through the drainage and the easement, and they assured him that it had nothing to do with that. But my point is it was brought before me. It was brought to my attention now, and I would like somebody to look into that to find out why that's occurring because it can be very dangerous there on Friendship Road, especially when it comes to the wintertime because that house has been there for some time. Yeah, that's number one. Number two, um, and this is for m both for you, Mr. Janicki, and Mr. Gannon. Um, a gentleman came up, I believe it was from Horizon Development over on Casino Drive, and he was concerned because he could not get his map signed to continue the development. And what he was addressing the planning board was, he said that he was waiting to be heard in front of Township Council on either vacating um, a parcel of property for widening Casino Drive. I have no idea what it's about. I don't know that anybody on this council was aware of it. He said it's been ongoing for maybe six or seven months. He had some documentation that was given to our town, um, the planning board uh, attorney, but I would like to find out what it's about because he is, was asking for a one-year extension, which it was, he was not given it graciously, but he was given that, afforded that extension, because he did not know that he could be seen or heard in front of the Township Council within the next six months. Cool. And I, I believe it's called Horizon Development. It's a development that has changed hands over the many years. It goes all the way back to 1989. I would greatly appreciate it if you could reach out to Ron Cachero and get to the bottom of it, because it's very disturbing. Okay. Um, one more comment, Mayor. In listening to all several residents discussing the tax reevaluation and the, and the taxes and so on and so forth, I have I've one thing, and this I, I want, is concerning you also. I am very happy to see that um, the recall petition is, is behind us. Um, I'm sorry that that has occurred, and I, I'm even sorry that we had to put. $80,000, and, and uh, I stand corrected if that's an incorrect number, into our budget to find out that it doesn't need to be there. And um, that's something that it was, we had to do. And um, I, I, I don't know where we go from here. I, I'm glad for the mayor. I'm glad it's be behind us. And um, I, I want to see us move forward in a, in a positive way. I think we've all worked on this board very hard to work in a and, but, but that's the part that I think disturbs. I think I speak for every one of us that, that it disturbs us that we had to put that money extra in, into the budget. I was not happy about the whole situation. Yeah. So, At this point, 
What what do we do with that eighty thousand dollars? I have well, an idea. I'm well, going to comment on the the tax rate's been struck. The budget's been adopted. Um, you know, it, the, in other words, the tax rate's been struck. The uh, bills have been printed, and uh, the budget's been adopted at this point. So what happens is is that simply that line item doesn't get used, and it folds into surplus uh, in a for for use into our general surplus for the following year. And we always start the budget by looking at what the surplus figures are. Okay. So it, simp it doesn't get spent. Maybe we could buy more speed bumps. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, Mr. Showmaker, I appreciate your comments. Um, this, this whole situation was, was apparent to me. Uh, the, the group has issued some sort of a statement, which is wonderful, that they've collected a certain number of signatures and fell short. The truth of the matter is we'll never know whether they had 7,000, 700, 50, 100, 10, 5. Uh, no one knows, and it's irrelevant at, 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 this, at this particular juncture. It is a shame. But one of the things that the several people have, have asked me, residents, some of whom in this chamber said, you got to... You, you should fight back. You should uh, do something about it. You should uh, go on the offensive and, 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 and make your comments known. And I felt that that would have been uh, very detrimental to the community. And, and you know, I'm going to ask to have a couple of minutes to comment without chirping from the audience, whoever it came from. And, and you know, we're very respectful of people's time, as we should be. And if someone has reason to have an outburst, I would ask that you just do the adult thing, step outside, have the outburst, and then come back in. But back to my comment, the whole process was, was obviously, at least in my view, there, there was no real mission to it other than to cause my family and I personal embarrassment. I offered to meet with the group several times and my calls and emails went ignored. So I don't even know what the issue was. I offered to have an opportunity to sit down with them. So it became obvious to me that this was, this was politics at its worst. And, and what I've taken away and, and learned from this is you, you can't respond uh, with that kind of, 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 of negative anger. It, it's, it's a waste of time. And I'm going to continue on. I'm sorry, Ms. Groton, that we're disappointing you with our comments. But I'm entitled to, to speak my mind. Uh, whoever, made the, whoever made the comment. So, so what, what, I'd, what I'd like to comment on is, 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 is that, um, boy, what a, what a shame. But in any event, it, it is a shame that the community had to go through it. It's a shame, and, and what I'm going to do at this point, um, I met with some residents on Ford Road, for example, who called me with concerns. And after the meeting, thankfully, they all called the clerk's office and asked to have their name taken off the petition because they had been misled and we have record of who those people were when they called. And so the way I'm going to go about this, I'm going to offer to meet with every single area in the town, make myself available for community meetings like I did on Ford Road. I'll go to Ramtown, I'll go to Salem Hill, I'll go to, to any particular area in the community where people want to get together with a group of neighbors. And we're going to talk about the town, and we're going to get their input, and we're going to do it in a very informal way. Because I found that was an extraordinary way to communicate with people and make sure they heard the information on a very unfiltered way. And I'm going to make myself available to anyone that wants to do it. I get emails and calls from people all the time, and I meet with residents all the time. But I'm going to put together as formalized a schedule as I can in every neighborhood and make myself available to meet with however many people, whether it's a group of two or a group of 100 or a group of 500. The, the other thing I want to make sure we get in the habit of doing, we talked about this, we did it for a while, is we have to take these meetings on the road. We need to go and we need to meet in the schools all over the community. Because unfortunately, the, the silent majority don't have an opportunity to get out. And we need to make certain that we're going right to where people are. We have these meetings on television. I found that when I went to Ford Road, the entire neighborhood came out and we had a, we had a lot of fun and we had a very productive meeting. I think if we can make it even more convenient and meet in the schools that are all positioned all over the town, that's the way to get our message out right to people and, and make it convenient. And I'm also going to set aside a couple of Saturdays a month, and I'm going to sit in the mayor's office down the hall here for any resident that wants to come in and wants to have an opportunity to talk about whatever's on their mind. 
and I'll publicize when that is, and I'll make coffee, and I'll bring donuts. Because I want to continue to get feedback like I did on Ford Road. Because what I found out from these people was very enlightening. And when they heard the different things the town was working on, and when I directed them to the website or to speak to various officials, they'd never been told any of that. In fact, they'd been told the exact opposite. And it was very refreshing that when people have an opportunity to get the information they want on an unfiltered basis, it's amazing to see the reaction and the response that you get from people. And then finally, uh, in, in, a, in an effort to, to extend an olive branch to put this whole thing behind us, I continue to invite the three individuals who were involved in the recall to come to these chambers on a special night. We'll televise it on Channel 77. And I have made contact to Freeholder Narizanic's office. And I've asked that the Honorable Na uh, Freeholder Narizanic uh, host the forum. We're on television on Channel 77. We can give the recallers, the three of them, an opportunity to come forward. Uh, it'll be the three of them and me. And I'd be happy to host a meeting on live television on Channel 77. So we give them another opportunity to come forward with whatever their concerns were. Because if they're legitimate, we have an obligation to resolve them. And I do that in an effort to once and for all try and get to the bottom of what the concerns are because we were never able to get our arms around what they were. And hopefully they not only come with their concerns, but they come with some solutions. Uh, and so I'm hoping that this combination of efforts and ideas, which was a learning process that was helpful to me, will give us all an opportunity to have better tolerance and also attempt to resolve our, our differences or our disputes in ways that, that don't cost the taxpayers money and that don't bring more division within our community. And I'm hoping that my reaching out in this way will end the bitterness and some of the, the political mean-spiritedness uh, that has existed in this town long before I've gotten here, long before many of us have gotten here. Howell Township has a terrible reputation of being a very mean-spirited political place. And, and we need to put an end to it. We've all been subjected to it at times, so everyone is to blame. But if there's anything I can do in the time I'm going to serve in this office, hopefully it'll be to demonstrate we can all communicate, we can all get along, we can even disagree, but we don't have to try and get mean-spirited and attack people in ways that bring dishonor to the community and dishonor to the process. So I'm going to put together a schedule of some of these things in more detail, share them with the community, and I'm excited about the prospect of furthering the dialogue with the silent majority who don't have the chance to come here every single week or every other week. Any other comments from members of the council? No, we the, have reason to go in. I'm sorry. Dude. The intention for the public participation that was at least once a quarter we would be in a school somewhere. So we actually started doing that when we first had this meeting night called, but we've gotten away from it. We should get back to it. I understand we have reason to go into executive session. Is that right? Okay, it'll be brief. Would uh, you kindly read the appropriate statement for executive? Whereas Title 10, Chapter 4, Section 13 of the New Jersey Revised Statutes requires that the public shall not be excluded from any meetings of a public body unless a resolution authorizing such exclusion is adopted at, pu at a public meeting. And whereas the Township Council of the Township of Howell has determined that such a closed meeting is required to discuss certain matters which are exempted from consideration with the public in attendance under New Jersey Revised Statutes 10, 4, 12, namely litigation. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Howell that the public shall be excluded from the next portion of the meeting and that the Township Council will not? We will not. Reconvene in the public session thereafter. Be it further resolved that minutes will be kept of the meeting in closed session and the time and circumstances under which discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public cannot be determined at this time. We need a motion. Ma Mayor, before that, you oh, do that. Sorry, there's, there's also a contractual issue to discuss. Okay, so it's... Litigation, litigation and contractual, and contractual potential litigation. Oh. Motion to adjourn into. Second. Motion to go into executive mm -hmm. and not return to yes. adjournment. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any remarks? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Showmaker? Yes. Mr. Tabasco? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mayor DeBella? Yes. Motion to adjourn? Good night. Motion to adjourn. Somebody. Motion. Motion. We did, I thought we did it right. Oh, we did we? Okay. Meeting adjourned.